Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Winter and welcome back to Tomb Raider Anniversary. And no, we are no longer in the Midas Palace, technically. Although, also technically, we are in the Midas Palace. But we are going to get out of the Midas Palace. And there's another failed swan dive. My goodness, I'm doing so good with those in this particular playthrough. Let's go for a swim. And hopefully I don't get lost in this little underwater labyrinth. It happens pretty easily to me in this one especially for some reason. It's a pretty lengthy one too. The longest one out of the game if I'm not mistaken. It's nothing complicated. It's just uh, yeah, a little bit tricky for me to find my way sometimes. And I'm about to run out of breath but there's an air pocket. Yeah, yes. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, yep. Took a little bit of damage on that. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, I don't think I want to go this way, but let's see what's over here. Yeah, that must be an invisible wall. Well, it's probably perfectly visible, it's just I can't see it because it's black on black. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're getting ready to start a particular level that is pretty vastly different from the original 96 counterpart. Oh, this is the correct way. Fantastic. Good stuff. So that wasn't as bad as I was remembering for some reason. There we go, the Tomb of Tehoken. Pretty different from its 96 counterpart. Not the level that has the most changes made to it. That comes later on in the series. But it's still pretty significant. I think it's one of those things though, it's a prime example of what I was talking about in the beginning of the series where I mentioned that there's enough variance in this game to make it interesting for players that played the 96 version and for people that haven't played the 96 version to play this and then go back and play the 96 version. Unfortunately with this set of, or this particular level, it benefits the people that never played the 96 version the most. Because when they go back and play that, you know, it's a it's an entirely new level for them, <laughs> or an entirely new set of levels. Because if you haven't played Tomb Raider 96, this is actually a mashup of two levels. And they claim to have taken the best elements from both of those levels, but I don't necessarily think that's true. But then again, it does keep the experience of the 96 game fresh for those that have never played it. Because you're not retreading the same ground and doing the same thing. Alright, I was waiting on him. So it's a little bit one-sided in the benefit of the change, unfortunately. But as always, I would be curious to know what those who have played both think, and which one they prefer. And that didn't go exactly how I was wanting to. Ordinarily, and I don't think you're supposed to be able to, but ordinarily, it's quite possible to go from that particular grapple point and swing and grapple onto that and skip over grabbing the little outcropping that I'm currently holding on to. Don't think it's supposed to be done that way, but it's very possible. In fact, I wasn't even aware of that outcropping being there for that reason until maybe my seventh playthrough of this level when it happened on accident like it did just there. Personally, I prefer the 96 version of this level. It's uh, got a, quite a bit more going on in it. And it's got that 96 Tomb Raider charm and charisma that you just can't replicate no matter how much you try. And I think Crystal came fairly close with this game here, but there's never going to be another Tomb Raider 96. You know, even Core couldn't match it again after Tomb Raider 2, at least in my opinion. You know, for me, the first two Tomb Raiders of Core are the best two that they did. And that's probably sacrilege to some people, but I mean, that's just how I feel about it. Alright. Okay, now that everything is in line, we'll do a quick jump for joy and see if we can swan dive and get it right this time. 
Yes! Success! Oh my goodness, I did something right. And it worked out as I planned. That's a rarity. Oh! What's in the water? Well, you probably heard the gator. Unless I talked over it a little bit too much. Or they'd be crocodiles, wouldn't they? Yeah, they'd probably be crocodiles. Those are quite a bit different from their 96 counterparts, too. In 96, they had a pretty epic death flop. <laughs> and I really enjoyed it and wish they would have brought that back. It was pretty comical, actually. Probably the most epic death animation out of any enemy in a Tomb Raider game that isn't Lara Croft. Though the most epic death in the series is yet to come, in my opinion. But that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. And I'll be asking everybody's thoughts on it whenever we get to it, if we get to it. Because I don't know at this point. You know, I have no idea what's around the corner. But I do know that there's another crocodile up here. Let's take this guy out the old-fashioned way, huh? See, these little bastards move fast. See, they, get, they came close with the epic death flop. It's pretty similar to that, only... Yeah, it's toned down quite a bit here in Anniversary. Which I do understand why they did that. I mean, you know, as I said, it was pretty comical, and I don't think it was supposed to be. <laughs> you know, it's one of those... One of the many instances that Tomb Raider has had of unintentional humor. And I don't need to go that way. I can go right back around here. Yeah, it's probably the same distance from either way, but... I like the water puzzle idea. I think it's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite puzzles from the original 96 version. Though it was definitely a lot more intricate back in that one. This was originally the cistern in 96, and most of you probably know that. I'm going to assume that most people who are watching this have probably played 96, and that was the wrong one to turn. So we need to push that and raise that water back up. Actually, you know what? I didn't... I was doing it right. Alright, pull it back. <laughs> uh, but you can see the shiny. I was trying to get to the switch to open the shiny down there. I guess we'll just wait on that. As long as I don't forget it like I did with St. Francis Folly. That's, uh... That was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't take damage on that fall. Oh, what do we got back here? Always take a look in the little bitty nook. There we are. There's one. And there's two. <gasps> oh my goodness. What do we got to do now? Well, let's find out together. First off, we've got to try and get the hell out of here, which is sometimes a little bit trickier than it needs to be. There's a... Particularly on this PlayStation 3 version, I don't know why, but I always have one little hiccup when I'm trying to get out of this area, and that's not it. That was kind of... that. Yeah, that wasn't what I was talking about. But I never had this hiccup in the PlayStation 2 version. And I can't think as to why there would be any reason whatsoever ooh, why there would be a hiccup for me in this particular spot here in the PlayStation 3 version and not in the PS2 version. I think it's just some kind of dumb luck curse type thing. But every once in a while right here when I jump back and grab this pole, and we'll see if it happens, every once in a while, I'll suddenly lose the grip on the pole, almost as if I've hit the release button on the controller, only I don't touch anything to drop. 
but we got it that time, so there's a little bit of luck shining down on us. Hey, look at that. Twice in a row. Good. We haven't really had any of the hiccups that I normally experience in this PlayStation 3 version so far. We've been pretty lucky. I'm kind of curious if that will change in this level later on, here in about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. But it's been pretty painless so far. And granted, these little hiccups that I'm talking about, you know, they're always... None of them are game-breaking. They're just weird. Like, <laughs> it kind of makes you wonder, like, how in the fuck is something like that even an issue but you know I don't know anything about the transfer process from taking a an older console game and sort of remastering it for a newer one I don't know how that shit begins to work you know I'm not a dev and I'll ask devs questions like that in Q&A's on gaming forums and for some reason in those Q&A's man the devs they never want to talk shop you know they just want to answer questions like you know what's Lara's favorite food and, you know, that's fair enough. That's fine. I I mean, I, I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's like, if I were a dev, and I was working on a Tomb Raider game, as intricate as these fucking things are, I would much rather be talking about how I climbed the mountain of a technical difficulty to make something fun and amazing, as opposed to, you know, Lara's favorite sneaker brand or something like that. And I'm not knocking those kind of questions at all. Don't take it that way. I'm I'm really not, but I just I find it interesting the questions that they choose to answer sometimes. And it's not just Crystal Dynamics, by the way. I've been involved in quite a few Q and A's on various gaming forums. Son of a bitch, I just did something wrong. Well shit. <laughs> Oh, I got too distracted talking. God damn. But now that we're here, we can actually flip the switch and fail at a swan dive and pick this up even though we shouldn't be able to. Check this out. Oh! My lady Lara can walk on the water. Alright, let's get the switch. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. There it is. That happened in the PlayStation 2 version, by the way. That's not one of the little strange hiccups I was talking about in this PlayStation 3 version. But that's always kind of a strange one, too. It's Well, for me, maybe it's perfectly normal for other people, but I've never seen anybody suddenly walk on water. You know, I've never been at the beach and seen somebody on one of those little inflatable rafts that has, like, the cup holder and shit. And they've got their travel mug of Kool-Aid or most likely some sort of adult alcoholic beverage in said travel mug. And they're swimming next to the raft and then all of a sudden they're standing on top of the water and reaching for the mug. You know, I've never seen that. But if you have, let me know. Because I would very much like to know how, where, <laughs> and what was in the travel mug. Alright, so let's start to do this the right way. I like the water effect, though. I don't know if I've talked about it, but I really dig the reflectiveness of it, both on the surface, as you can see, and underneath. I think that's pretty fucking cool. Well, that's not really a good example. Maybe I saw something that was only in my imagination. Oh, no, there it was. Yeah. You can see Lara there couldn't see that in the PlayStation 2 version. It's one of those nice little details. I'm unfamiliar if that effect was present in the Xbox release of Anniversary. Though, if you do own an Xbox and you played this on it, feel free to let me know. Okay, now we're doing things the right way. So let's drag this little bastard to the corner over here. 
Well, that's not gonna be straight, but fuck it, that'll work. And now we can go back and raise up the water once more. With feeling. Feeling! And speaking of feeling, goddamn, my coffee is kicking in. I was going to go in for overtime tonight. I'm still doing the graveyard shift as of this recording and working incredibly strange hours. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's an sometimes it's an 8-hour day and sometimes it's a 10-hour day. Tonight was supposed to be a, a 10. So I didn't sleep for shit all day long. And got maybe four hours of sleep, got up, got ready to go into work. Had just finished pouring some coffee into my travel mug, which is essentially me getting ready to walk out of the door. And then I got a phone call saying that overtime had been canceled tonight. So <laughs> I'm wide the fuck awake and I was loaded on caffeine because I did not sleep for shit. So if I get a little bit hyper or a little bit distracted or something like that, or my rambling just becomes too much that you stop watching the video at any point, blame it on the coffee. There's an executed swan dive. And that one was a mistake, too, because I wasn't going for that. <laughs> I just wanted to jump into the water, but I guess I'll take it. It'll work. It gets us over here. Okay, let's pull this little bastard a little bit closer. That ought to do. It looks pretty good. So, if I'm remembering correctly, and if I'm not, again, please let me know, because it has been a while since I've played the original Tomb Raider. I believe this little water tunnel right here was the end of the cistern level in that, and then the Tomb of Tihokan officially began. So right now we would actually be in the Tomb of Tihokan. I did get the shiny, right? Yes, got the shiny. One more to go. And I know where that's at, so it shouldn't be too problematic. Uh, where's my tunnel? There's my tunnel. Alright, I jumped in at the wrong spot. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Come on, Winter. Get it together, man. You're better than that. You're better than that. I always enjoy underwater levels if they're done right. Oops, that's the wrong direction. I think a problem that Core had whenever they would do... Yeah, I gotta go up for air now. Look at this shit. Oh! That was close. <gasps> What's that? For me, a problem I think that Core had whenever they would do underwater levels is after Tomb Raider 2 they just seemed to be and I'm trying to think of how to phrase this here I think they became a little bit too ambitious with the underwater levels <gasps> a door opens impractical lock number 67 You know, Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2, the water levels were fair, and they were pretty well designed. Now, they were also well designed in the following games, you know, Tomb Raider 3 and The Last Revelation. Uh, I can't speak for Chronicles, because I really don't remember right off the top of my head if there was an underwater level. Oh, fuck yeah, there was, there was. An entire level dedicated to being underwater. How in the fuck did I forget that momentarily? But they just kind of seem to, uh, by the time those later games rolled around after Tomb Raider 2, with everything really, it seemed like they just didn't give a shit <laughs> about being fair. You know, it was almost like uh, they were just trying to be a pain in the ass with the level design so that people would stop buying the fucking games 
so that they could work on something else. It's easy to forget, especially in this day and age when video games... Oh my god. Alright, what's the little med pack? Down. We've got plenty of those to spare. It's easy to forget in this day and age where it can sometimes take about five years for a game to come out after it's been announced. But these things were coming out every single year back in the late 90s. Like clockwork, man. It was old reliable. You could depend on that. You could count on that. Um, okay, got both of them. I just wanted to double check before we went in there. And just like you and I, would probably get sick and tired of our job if we did the same thing over and over again every single day. I don't see why game development is any different. I think it's probably pretty fucking easy for a game dev to get burned out on the game that they're making and lose the passion and interest and all that stuff. It's just my speculation, mind you. Don't take it to heart or as the word or anything like that, but I can see it. And I would imagine, much like some people that I've worked with who have been sick and tired of their jobs, when you just don't give a shit, you don't give a shit, and things slip through the cracks, sometimes intentionally. the god king Tihokan, one of the triumvirate, keepers of the three pieces of the skeel, leader of the chosen after the great betrayal caused Atlantis to be lost beneath the waves. Yeah, let's see what's in there. Oh my goodness, where is he? Never revealed. You see it. Instincts can be expensive, mademoiselle. Yours are going to cost you both pieces at the Skion. That's not a price I'm prepared to pay. Don't be absurd. No job is worth dying for. That's very true. Can't deny that logic. Yes, it is. Unless you're Lara Croft. <laughs> See what I mean? Pierre's level-headed got a good head on his shoulders. And now, having seen the cans at the beginning of the... Oh, I'll wait. Oh, look out, Pierre! Uh, you see, and he's a nice guy, and he's generous, and he's willing to share. And this is his reward. Oh, look at that face. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's the best, most epic death in the entire series as far as I'm concerned. That's good stuff. All right, we're going to do this one without dying. There we are. Grapple the shield. Yeah, alright, so my theory on what happened to Tehokan. Now that it has been confirmed, or at least mentioned on the cans that Pierre was a litter bug with, that those are in fact labeled Bob, I think what happened is Tehokan's first name was Bob, and somebody, and I don't know who, but somebody came into that tomb before Lara, and somehow or another ended up having Bob's maybe femur in their mouth and thought, you know, that's pretty goddamn tasty. If you could put this in a can, you could really make some money. But that's just a personal theory. That's never been proven, you know. It does make you wonder, though, huh? Or maybe I'm just the only one that kind of wonders that. You know, I... I don't know, what do you guys think happened to Tehokan? And why was it never mentioned anywhere? Oh! Goodness gracious me. Oh my goodness. 
Alright, get out of there, Lara. Oh, wrong one. God damn. There we go. Oh, out of bullets. Alright, so far so good. I haven't seen the glitch that I was looking out for. Ordinarily in these boss battles, this glitch that I'm thinking of, for some reason, every time I play this goddamn PlayStation 3 version of this game, one of the boss battles will always glitch and kind of freeze and be stuck in place for... It's a very short period of time, but it's very noticeable. And it's just strange. Breaks the pacing of the scene. Look at that, just spun his head all the way around. I liked Pierre, man. That's pretty sad to me. Such a nice guy. To go out like that. It's just proof of the old saying, nice guys finish last. But now I think I'll change it to, nice guys don't finish last. They get stomped the fuck on by old minotaurs. So next time someone says to you, nice guys finish last, you tell them that. See what they say. You have tainted the power of the Skion. In betraying your fellow kings, you have broken the sacred triumvirate of Atlantis. You have maimed Qualopec, your own brother. I am still here, wretch. Diokan has ended your treachery. What have you to say for yourself? Oh, such a mystery. Such a mystery! Oh no! That's the worst part about energy drinks, man, is coming down. Of course, it's a little bit different than coming down the way that Lara came down. And what the fuck happened exactly to make that happen? Has that ever been explained? I just, I've never understood that particular flashback sequence where suddenly she's floating through the air. It just, it kind of stands out as very strange to me. But at any rate, as soon as the trophies are done, we will continue. I think that's it. Yep, there we go. So there's our unlockables. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching Episode 7 of Tomb Raider Anniversary. I'll see you back here on Episode 8, where we go to the land of the Lost Horizon, where the chains are on. We're going to Egypt, for those that don't listen to Dio. Alright, see ya.